Alright, cool. So I can put up an extra, extra video up on YouTube once I get through doing this on uh, Facebook. So I can push the extra video on YouTube. But anyway, guys, uh, I got a story right here that caught my attention. And uh, I'm kind of late with the story, but uh, I just happened to run across it. And uh, something that's kind of weird to me that I never heard this before. You have a young teenager uh, who was jailed because, um, you know, she didn't do her homework, but they, I guess this was part of her probation or something. I don't know. I never heard this before. But, um, you know, I know back when I was growing up, you know, when we didn't do homework, we'd get punished, we'd get our ass whooped. But to go to jail for not doing homework, you know, I never heard that before. So that's kind of... Uh, strange to me but on the youtube side good morning good afternoon good evening whenever you watch my content and as always like comment subscribe and share so ladies and gentlemen uh, i'm gonna let y'all hear what's going on right here and um I'll, as always you know y'all get y'all thoughts on what um y'all about to hear so this is a story in beverly hills michigan of a young lady who was 15 years old who was jailed because she didn't do her homework Let's have a listen. Speaking up for a Groves High School student named Grace who can't be heard. I know that if, if Grace was a 15 year old white girl, that she would not be sitting in juvenile detention right now. Sherry Crawley has teen daughters. When I heard her story, those are my girl's story. Her heart sank when she heard that Grace was in the juvenile justice system for fighting and stealing. And then she broke down when she heard that Oakland County Family Court presiding judge, Mary Ellen Brennan, sent Grace to juvenile detention for violating her probation by not doing her online schoolwork. And I dropped to my knees and my daughters had to, they woke up hearing me cry. The judge's decision causing a firestorm of controversy. Protesters gathering at Groves, then caravanning to the Oakland County Courts Complex. Governor Whitmer issued an executive order that specifically talked about uh, not incarcerating children during this global pandemic. Uh, and this uh, situation does exactly the opposite of that. Oakland County Prosecutor Jessica Cooper telling us, quote, the controversy involves a family court judge's decision on a case she took jurisdiction on a while ago. Only she can change or modify the order. Oakland County Executive David Coulter is calling for Grace's case to be reviewed immediately and has this message for Grace. You're a 15 year old girl. You're a young girl with a, your whole life ahead of you. And I wanna make sure that you have every opportunity to succeed. And it's my responsibility and the county's opportunity to make sure that we're giving you the appropriate support and resources so that you can be successful in your life. And that's all any of us responsibility and the county's opportunity to make sure that <clears throat> um well how about that very 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 interesting very interesting very interesting so uh what i'm gonna go to next is uh for what they saying is this is going beyond her not doing her homework so let me play this right here then we're gonna get into a little bit of commentary and see what's really going on with this story all right and this one right here, what I'm about to show y'all, it was published on July the 21st, which was seven days ago. So uh, let's see what's really going on right here. Let's have a listen. Oh, here, yeah, probably play, play an ad. Yep, it's gonna play an ad. So uh, gotta wait till the ad get through. <laughs> Gotta wait till this ad get through. This whole thing I hate about doing news when I try to play these news clips is the damn ass. They get on my goddamn nerves. So, all right, here we go, here we go. The judge today denying release for the 15 year old, ordering she stay in her program at Children's Village. The two hour hearing filled with testimony from the judge and social workers who said the 15 year old identified as Grace is improving in her programs at the juvenile center, but also detailing a history of domestic violence and fights. And who all look, y'all hit that thumbs up or something, let me know that you're here. Outside, protests continued, saying the judge's sentence to keep Grace in the village was overly harsh and racially motivated. Gracie deserves a chance, a learning disability or not, she is a human. She should not have been thrown in that girl's detention center and she deserves to come home with her mom. She Inside and for the first time, Grace pleading with the judge to send her home.
The judge saying she understands, but ultimately keeping the teen detained is her final ruling. If I were to grant the request to release you home today, I would be making a mistake. The judge told this young lady that uh, if she grant her release today that she would be making a mistake um so let's get into this argument i mean excuse me let's get into the article and see why she claims she would make a mistake if she let the young girl go right now so all right it reads as follows it says a 15 year old girl who has been incarcerated in michigan since may mid-may after she failed to do her online school work won't be returning home anytime soon so the the young lady been uh incarcerated since mid-may because she failed to do her online school work and she won't be returning home anytime soon oakley county judge mary ellen brennan i guess that's how you say her name ordered a girl identify only as grace to remain at a juvenile detention center where she is enrolled in a residential treatment program until september the case has drawn national headlines and sparked protests demanding Grace release. Brennan noted that the failure to complete schoolwork was a probation violation. Okay, so by reading that, I'm guessing her doing her schoolwork was part of her probation. Hmm. Okay, it looked like the pieces starting to come together. And not the sole reason Grace was jailed. Uh-huh. Okay. <clears throat> During the three-hour proceeding Monday, the girl told Judge Renan she wanted to go home and promised to stay out of trouble. The judge, however, told her it was in her best interest to stay in the program after all of the progress she had been making. If I were to grant the request to release you home today, I would be making a mistake, the judge says. Michigan Congresswoman Debbie Dingell, D-I-N-G-E-L-L, is among those who have questioned whether race was a factor in detaining the girl. Black youth in Michigan are more than four times as likely to be detained or commit than white youth according to 2015 data analyzed by the Nonprofit Sentencing Project. And they got where I can read for more information on that. Okay. And you got a couple of people down here who made some comments or whatnot. Uh, you got one right here. They said, oh, well, you failed to follow terms of the probation. Get over it, mummy. You raised a troublemaker. Hmm. You got one person right here says black Michigan youth is four times more likely to commit serious crimes and be detained as all others. And you got one person right here said next time she would do her homework and maybe not steal and assault people. He falls down here kind of hard in these comment sections. So anyway, Again, uh, here, here's my thing on this, you know, with the titles like this and stuff, you know, I hate that they try to leave it bland as to people doing things wrong or whatnot. And that's why when I do what I do, you know, hey, I do research before I just jump in and talk about, oh, hell no, they did this to black people? Oh, fuck no, blah, 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 blah. I got to do my research or whatnot. Now, i never been to jail. i never been on probation, so I don't know how none of this shit works. But however, though... <clears throat> If that was part of the young lady's probation that she's supposed to do a school work and that was part of the probation then it is what it is you know the young lady violated her probation and she got you know she got detained for um not doing what she's supposed to do now this is the thing that i hate about doing a lot of these stories everybody instantly jump in and say that this is racist it's racist it's racist well it's not that always all the time and you heard the mom say you know if this had been a white girl you know she probably wouldn't been in jail I don't know. Some of that may be true. I can't say. But it's mighty funny that that's what we always go to when our children get in trouble. I'm not a father, but I'm saying because I'm a black man. It's funny that we always resort to that every time, you know, one of our children get in trouble. If they were white, this one happened. If they was white, that wouldn't happen. If this was white, this one happened. If they were white, that would happen. How do you know? We're not talking about a white girl right now. We're talking about a young black girl who was on probation, and one of her probations was to do her homework. And not only that, I'm gonna read y'all article in a minute where yes, this story goes deeper than what we than what the surface is saying just about her homework. This young lady was fighting her mama, assaulting her mama. This this young lady was stealing from her mama. And I think there's a couple more other things 
that was going on with this young lady. So here's the thing. If she's in the juvenile system for doing all this with her moms, then that mean her mom must have called the police on her a couple of times too for her to be detained. So why is she, if that's the case, then why you want to claim racist now that your child is detained when you yourself had called the police on a couple of times for doing shit to you? So is she in the system because of you, because you called on her? I don't know. But I'm seeing if I can find the mom and reach out to the mom, because y'all know me, I like to get everybody... I like to get everybody a voice. So if the mom can shine more light on this situation, I will bring the mom on the show and let the mom talk. But for right now, looking on the surface, on the outside looking in, mom, you have a troubled child. And I understand, you know, you want to fight for your baby. And you try to, uh, you don't want your baby behind them bars. But the way I grew up in the 1980s, and I'm pretty much sure a lot of y'all who might look at this later on, if you grew up in the 1980s, we called that tough love. It was called tough love. You got to learn one way or the other. All right? If you slap me in the face, and I let you slide, you slap me again, how many more other cheats do I got to turn? How many times have I certainly let you slap the shit out of me before I take action? Or you don't whoop your ass, or I'm going to call the police and get your ass detained. Just how many times I'm going to let you do shit before I finally take action? All right? I just want y'all to think about that for a minute, you know? So, uh, again, on the outside looking in, this is how I feel about it. But, but as always, I can stand corrected. If I'm wrong, I don't mind staying corrected. Uh, so let me pull up this um, other article that's talking about this child. And I think it's going to bring up all that about what she's doing to her mama. And right here, this is New York Times. Now... Again, it says the judge declines to release the 15 year old here for skipping online schoolwork. And she's been in juvenile detention since May after she violated probation term by skipping her school's remote learning coursework. And here's what it says. And this was done July 21st. A judge on Monday denied a motion to release a Michigan teenager who has been held at juvenile detention facility since May for not completing her online course coursework. The latest development in the case that has raised national outcry. Judge Mary Ellen of the Oakland County Circuit Court ruled that the teenager who violated, excuse me, <clears throat> that the teenager who violated the terms of her probation by skipping coursework when her school switched to remote learning because of the coronavirus pandemic should remain in the juvenile facility. The judge said that the decision was intended for the girl's own good. And this is what the judge says. She said, I think you are exactly where you are supposed to be. Judge Bernan told the 15 year old defendant, who is black, you are blooming there, but there is more work to be done. All right, so according to the judge, since you've been detained, you've been doing better than what you've been doing before. So is it really bad that she's detained? I don't know. But it also goes on to say, uh, she said the police have been called three times. Y'all see what I, look, look, right there. So even the mom has been calling the police on the girl. So why is it racist all of a sudden now? She said the police has been called three times over confrontation between the girl and her mother. Hmm? Hmm? So the police been called three times because of confrontation between the mom and the child. They mean the mom been calling the police on her own child. But since the judge don't put her in detained or juvenile system, because she failed probation. Now the mom is out there hollering about this is racist. If this was a white child, this wouldn't happen. This, this is why I don't play that race game shit. Because it's, a lot of times it's bullshit. Ma'am, on the outside looking in, reading this story, you got a troubled child. It is all this too. You got a troubled child, you know, and you need to get help for your child. And for what I'm reading right now, it's saying your child doing better while she's detained. So again, you know, I don't know. With my grandmother back in the day, Miss Rosalie Chandler, if that was me in that position, she would have told them, no, nah, if he's doing better, keep his ass down there. Because again, back then it was called tough love. A lot of us is soft these days. You know, these kids do all this shit go crazy. You call the police, all it takes is one tear, do you fall soft? Do you fall soft prey to them? And I get it. I get it because you don't want to see your child like that. But again, what is going to take for them to learn to get their stuff together? That's even for me if I have a child. What is it going to take for them to learn to get their shit together? So, Mom, if even the judge says she's blooming while being detained, then, you know, 
so you gotta take this with the bit and sweet. Say, okay, well, my baby's doing better over there, then. No, maybe this is the best thing for her. And when she gets out, maybe we can have a better relationship. Okay? But that's on the outside. Look at that, mom. So you listening to this or anybody who know you, I will welcome you to come on the show and speak. Seriously. <clears throat> oh, 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 oh. Look, look, look what it says right here. She was not detained because she didn't turn her homework in, the judge said. She was detained because she was a threat to her mother. Wow. <clears throat> wow. Mm. But but it's racist though. It's racist. Anyway. Uh let me see. How long I'm going right here? I try not to go too long for the uh, YouTube side. I should have went live. All right. It goes on to say the teenager was not placed in detention and in, or incarcerated at the end of those previous encounters. So she wasn't a uh, detained or wasn't put in incarceration after the previous encounters, according to her lawyer. The case, the case which was reported by ProPublica, and I'll get that link and put it in there for y'all, y'all want to read it, last week has drawn nationwide condemnation. Protesters got outside the courthouse on Thursday and chanted Black Lives, they matter here. Mm. A caravan of more than 200 cars had driven from the teenager high school to the courthouse according to Michigan Liberation, a nonprofit group that organized the rally. The hearing took place at the request of the girl's lawyer who had filed a motion for her early release. Was that Sama Khalil? S A I M A K H A L I L. One of her lawyers said the experience had been traumatizing for the girl and her mother. She wants to go home. Miss Khalil says she wants to be with her mom. She's a one member set and upset. <sighs> okay. Ms. Khalil said the court was, was, were wrong to incarcerate people who have mental health issues. She said her client had attention deficient hyperactivity disorder and received special education ser services, which made it difficult for her to shift to online education. Hmm. The girl had been on probation after she pulled her mother's hair. She pulled her mom's hair, bit her finger in November, the judge said the police referred the case to the Oakland County Court and an assault charge was filed against the girl a few weeks later. She was charged with larceny. Oh my God. Oh wow. After she was caught on surveillance video stealing a cell phone from a fellow student at Birmingham Groves High School in Beverly Hills, northwest of Detroit, according to ProPublica. Speechless. I'm speechless. Wow. I'm getting behind in my actual school while I'm here, she said, according to a video recording of the proceedings. My mom, my mom wanted for me to get help anywhere, get help anywhere else but the judicial system, and I am not doing well emotionally. Y'all know what? I'm going to stop right there. I, I, I'm going to stop right there. And, uh, anybody who want to read this or whatnot, I'm going to put all the links in the description box so you can take a read uh, yourself. Um, man. Uh, man. At the end of the day, you know, this this girl's trouble. That's that's all these two. She's trouble. And, you know, uh, maybe she does have a learning disorder or whatnot. But, um you know, uh, if she says she's not doing emotionally well there or people believe that she's not going to do well behind the bars. Well, it seems like to me she's not doing well at home either. So where do you go from here? If she's not doing well at home and she's fighting her mama, being a bruiser to her mama, biting her, stealing from her, and you're going around, you know, fuck with other people, stealing stuff, then if she's not well off in both of them places, then where is she well off at? That is my question. Where is she well off at? And uh, on that note, 
that's what I'm ending saying right here on that note. You know, hey, as always, y'all tell me what y'all think about this. Do you think uh do you think this is racist? <laughs> do you think uh the girl needs to be there? Do you think she needs to be out at home with her mom after all this that you heard? I mean Yeah, y'all yeah, y'all just tell me what y'all think about it. I'm your man, Chris Thors, man, and why this is wild. This is real wild. But uh at the end of the day, I hope the young lady gets the help that she need and uh, when she does get out, I do hope she be a better person or she can be a better person if she get the proper tools and help that she needs. On that, you know, any updates come out of this, I'll come up here and tell y'all. On your man Chris Thorns, peace. Mm -hmm.